Today we're going to uh, implement, re-implement, reduce, reduce. Last week we did, um, uh, we, uh, we implemented map and filter from scratch uh, with the purpose of understanding a little bit how higher order functions work and get a better intuitive feel for that because that can be, be a little bit magical uh, and uh, you just use the built-in functions on the array and then you don't really know what's going on, you know? Like, and you feel a little bit like you're not into control and they're not really complicated at all. They're just a little bit foreign. So if we just, a great way of making something less scary is to just build it yourself. Um, and that's what we're going to do today with Reduce. Uh, if you uh, want to check out the, if you're watching the YouTube edit and you I uh, want to check out the the old map and filter manager. You can check out. Uh, I'm probably gonna like, put a card somewhere here. There, there. Never remember which direction. Uh, Albaka asks, "How can we view the previous map filter?" You can find it on YouTube. Now, before we do that, though, I would like to thank today's uh, today's sponsor. Um, whoop! Brilliant! Brilliant! Uh, Brilliant has been with us for a long time. Uh, they are, they're amazing. Uh, it's these interactive tutorials uh, where, where you can like have inline. You basically, you basically code and get in immediate feedback all the time. You solve math problems or whatever it is that you want to uh, want to learn. I recommend Brilliant for learning computer science fundamentals like uh, like how to do sorting how to do how trees are data structures and and uh, time complexity that kind of thing uh, all the kind of stuff that you're asked uh, for uh, on, tend to be asked for in interviews uh, and also the kind of math that you uh, will need uh, if you're foraying into uh, into machine learning and AI then that is then brilliant is just really really great uh, so do check them out use the uh, brilliant.org slash whip um, brilliant.org slash fff link uh, to get um, a bunch of if you get their annual subscription but more importantly it also tells them that you uh, that you came from here which is nice for our relationship with them uh, and letting them know that it's a good thing to be supporting fun fun function Without further ado, uh, we are going to go to get coding. Going to get coding. Okay, okay. So, how like let's remind ourselves how reduce works. First of all, so we at reduce works like you. Uh, we're gonna use the most basic reduce example, you know, which is summing an array uh, or summing the items in an array. So we have like one, two, three. Let me save this with JavaScript. Uh, vanilla reduce JS, and we're gonna reduce this. This is an array, and then I'm gonna grab, um, yeah, grab that. And what is it now? Uh, it's I keep forgetting that it's prev and cur. Um, Mm, bear with me here um, and then we just go like we take the we add the current with with the with the previous and then we start with zero and I think that this will give us like one plus two plus three which would be six Let's see if that's right I'm gonna whoop help I'm gonna start quokka on this file Quark is a little thing that gives us inline evaluation here, uh, which allows me to do this, right? Did it, and that gives us six. Yeah, cool. Uh, so let me walk walk us through this a little bit. What happens? We are not confused. Uh, let me also like result. Um, bing, 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 bing. and then I'm gonna see the right result here. Um, 
let's break this up a little bit to make it uh, make it less confusing. Uh, we are going to have const uh, numbers. But mip, mip. So one, two, three here, and then we're gonna go numbers reduce. Underscore funks points out that accumulator is a better uh, name than prem. Let's let's actually call it that. Uh, ack. That's a little bit better. Um, and let's write out accumulator. Um, and I'm going to flesh this uh, flesh this function out a little bit. Um, so that we get more, see it a little bit. Uh, and uh, I'm gonna call this current. Uh, and Here. I'm gonna write out current. So if you look at current here, that's going to be one, two, three. Accumulator. Um, it's going to be one, uh, zero, one, three. So you see what what is happening here when I write like this is that on every loop of uh, every time this thing is called here, uh, it's going to write out what the value is. So you see here at accumulator starts out as zero uh, and the and then on the second loop is going to be one because we have here added uh, our current current value uh, to the accumulator uh, so we've been adding one to zero and then returned it and then whoosh, on the second pass uh, the accumulator is not going to be one and then on the second pass or like the the last pass uh, it's going to be three so then and then we will be because one plus two is three and then it's going to be adding the three to the uh, adding the three to the current accumulator and then it's going to be six so this might be like I went through that pretty fast. I went through that pretty fast, um, and so I'm assuming a little bit here that you are somewhat uh, familiar with reduce. If you are not, I made a video on reduce that you can find on the YouTube channel. If you're watching this on YouTube, I'm probably gonna link it in the cards over there, uh, so that might see you. Uh, um, might uh, give you a good, like a better, better view. Uh, reduce is uh, essentially the f like in f the way you do a for loop uh, in functional functional languages because a for loop implies side effects and in functional programming you can't really have side effects. Thus, you use you use for loops, but that does use reduce. Um, and uh, reduce, um, reduce is a little bit more convoluted than a for loop. Uh, for loop is if you can use a for loop, I think that you should because it's just as just simpler. But reduce have these cool composability uh, benefits, and it's also kind of just nice to um, understand it and not be afraid of it because it makes you so much more comfortable with functional programming. Really. Uh, so let's break this uh, break this up a little bit. Um, let's think about like what uh, what this is, this function here, because this is our reducer const. And we're gonna just pass this out here. Mm -hmm. Reducer. Beep, beep. Blop. A reducer. Yep. Uh, and uh, no. 
I'm gonna keep these here. I'm not gonna simplify the reducer anymore. Um, and uh, leave it there. So reduce here uh, is a method on on array or like on um, yeah on the array prototype to be specific in JavaScript. Um, and uh, I think a lot of people have not really thought about like how reduce actually works or um, it, it's just one of those things that are like, yeah, it's a little bit magical, and it's a little bit scary. And, um, um, and as Chris says, like Jake Archibald uh, went on Twitter to deaths on reduce saying that other than summing values is not readable as using a four. And uh, yes, that is correct. That is correct, but it's there. It's in the language. You all often see reducers being used, like hell redux. Uh, that is one of the most popular state containers. Is essentially just an implementation of reduce, um, or like it is a reducer. Um, so you see here, like in uh, the accumulator and current, like this is this is the same pattern as a um, as redux. It's just like in this. Um, this would just be state, and this would be the action, sort of, you know. I think it's a long time since I did reduce, or did Redux, 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 Redux. Anywho, uh, the purpose of this stream that I want to do today is to just implement uh, Reduce in like vanilla Reduce, uh, so that we we can do that without without using the thing. Like, just write it from scratch, you know? Uh, so function, you look here on reduce. Uh, the, the the signature is that first it takes a reducer, and then it takes this initial accumulator value. So let's do that. Uh, reducer and accumulator. Yeah, can somebody suggest a better name for this? <laughs> uh, that's a horrible value. Uh, and now this is a really dumb name for the reducer. Uh, it should probably be, what is it? It's some it's summing reducer. Oop. Is that better? Yeah, initial value, yes, initial, initial, eh, eh. Yeah, initial accumulator value is a correct name. Uh, I'm gonna keep it as initial accumulator value first because the purpose of this is to understand the concept and getting a feel for it. Uh, and then we're gonna sh make it into a shorter name once we, once we get a feel for this. So we have the reducer. Yeah, and then we, of course, we need the actual, uh, the actual array. Which should, should initial accumulator value be after the array or before the array? I'm a little bit little bit confused um, I'm a little bit what what would what is the proper functional programming uh, order array last yeah that's correct but should the initial accumulator yeah the reducer should it seems like these should be like this If it was a functional language, uh, 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 ML Server Pixel says, if it was a functional language, it'd be function value array. Yeah. Um, all right, so. Um, uh, I'm just gonna do, write, do like the last video, start with a for loop. Not sure if that's right, but. 
to do. <laughs> when when the last video was posted, there was someone that was like, yeah, he doesn't know how to do reduce off the top of his head. And I was like, screw you, man, I can do that. <laughs> I have not prepared for this at all, just because of that dude's comment. Uh, so, let's see. Uh, while i is less than array dot length length uh, and uh, then i plus plus Boop. Um, and then we're gonna have like const uh, current uh, array da -da -da -da. and then we are going to pass the current item into the reducer and we need to pass the the Cumulator value. So let's see here. We're gonna call like call this is accumulate value equals the initial accumulator value, and we're gonna pass in the accumulator value. <laughs> Robert Table says, "MPJ, you got this." Thanks for the thanks for the confidence. Uh, and then this is gonna be like the, whatever this returns is going to be assigned as the new accumulator value. And once we're done, we're going to return the accumulator value. See if I did that correctly. <laughs> so if so, now I should be able to just comment this out and uh, use our new reduce function. Uh, yeah, let's see the reducer value, and then I should just pass in the numbers here. Numbers. Did that work? <laughs> that did work. Uh, hang on, I have to test it because it seems implausible. Yeah, I got it right on the first time. Mm! Let me just make a dance. Boom, 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 boom. Dance, reduce dance, can write. Suck it, person that said I couldn't do reduce off the top of my head. Ah. <laughs> All right, so let's let's walk through this. Let's walk through this. What happened? So for every current, uh, we are going to pass the current item into the reducer. So, and the reducer, remember, is now the summing reducer here because we, we pass that into reducer here. Um, and and the, now the current item is here. And the accumulator is on first run, it's going to be zero. It's going to be zero. Because we're passing zero here. This is, and this is the initial accumulator value, which we set to initial accumulated value here. So on the first run this is uh, this is zero. I'm gonna actually uh, echo this out here then I'm gonna also echo it out after the addition. So you see here like what you see here no 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 is the first iteration, the second iteration and the third iteration. So the first iteration uh, accumulator is zero first, then we run it through the reducer, and the reducer just reduces it to the zero or to one. Sorry, uh, and then we run the second loop. We have the accumulator value here, uh, which is now one because you now now we run this outer loop here, uh, and then that accumulator value is passed into the reducer. Wow. Uh, having it in here <laughs> and then they are actually added in and returned and that gives us the accumulated value of 3 
and so on and so on. So reduce is a little bit. It's a weird name, isn't it? Reduce. Uh, it's. Um, it, it's. I think it's. It comes. It, the, I, the closest metaphor I've heard is like making a sauce. You uh, you kind of like add ingredients to it and then you reduce it to do something. But it's. I don't know. You, like. You reduce a number of ingredients into one thing. You add ingredients into a, into a pot, then it boils, and now it's uh, now it's one uh, now it's one thing. You're reducing a series of items into one thing. And uh, Audhain says, um, "I prefer the name fold because you're folding the connection." Uh, and uh, yeah, I think so. I, I like, I agree. I agree. Fold is a better name for this. Um, actually, let's do it. Fold. Fold. And I guess that um, we would call uh, this folder. Something folder. Maybe that will help someone. Um, yeah, you're folding something into a, a single thing. It's um, like I like. I think it's nice to uh, to re-implement things like this uh, because it. It also gives you like this nice, uh, nice sense of control. Uh, and watching me do it is not quite going to do it for you. I recommend that you do this yourself. Whenever you, uh, whenever you find yourself in a situation where something is, you you understand it, but it doesn't quite feel intuitive and safe. It's always a good, good thing to. To just re-implement it in order to get control of it. That's how I learned promises, and that's how I learned monads. Um, just like get a feel for it. Uh, so let's see. I'm going to paste this into a just vanilla reduced or js. Uh, I'm going to paste this in in chat so that you have it if you want to. Want some kind of reference jumping off point. And if you're watching the YouTube edit later, uh, this link is also in the uh, episode description. So you can just jump there. And yeah, and that's it. That's it. That's how we, that's how reduce works or fold as it's called in some functional languages. It's just, it's sort of like a the method for when you, it, it's sort of like the functional programming equivalent of the process where you take something with a for loop that they would use a for loop for in imperative languages to reduce something big into into a single value. Such like the the most common example is summing things. But yeah, Audhain. So how can we use reduce to implement map? Fun, fun function. I think that's a great, uh, yeah. I, and Robert Tabers also points it out. Maybe show next time how to use reduce to do both filter and map. Yeah, we're definitely going to do that. Next time, I'm going to do filter and map. This episode is sponsored by Brilliant. Uh, they provide these awesome interactive uh, programming and uh, math courses where you have interactive tutorials, sort of like a game, really good for learning computer science math or uh, uh, any computer science fundamentals. Uh, if you use the link here below, brilliant.org slash FFF, you get a lot of uh, lot off on their annual uh, subscription. And it also tells you, tells them that you came from here. Thank you so much for sponsoring the show, Brilliant. And that's it. Thank you so much for watching. 
This uh, was an episode of Fun Fun Function. I record these live every Monday morning uh, at 7 a.m. Pacific time. Go to the link in the episode description to share, find that in your time zone and follow on twitch.tv slash fun fun function to get a no notification when we go live. Um, yeah, that is it. Uh, until next Monday morning, stay curious. <laughs>